What does this cancellation or delay, I should say, actually mean? It's just a blip, no serious issues here, right? Yeah, it looks like everything technically went fine. They got up to 14 minutes, I think, uh, T minus 14 minutes. So it was really the weather that held them back. Um, and you can't do anything to control the weather. So everything checked out. They fueled the spacecraft and and now they are um, uh, taking it down and they're going to try it again on, on Saturday. And then there's another window on Sunday. We're actually standing by now for the astronauts to disembark. They have to do several things before they can actually exit the spacecraft. So we are waiting uh, for them to come out. Of course, there were a lot of spectators there. The president, his family, President Trump, uh, just saying he looks forward to uh, being with NASA and SpaceX on Saturday, uh, assuming uh, the launch does uh, happen as now planned this weekend. Talk to us about what this means for the industry. Obviously, it's been nine years since NASA sent an astronaut into space from U.S. soil. This will be the first time a private company is doing so and the first launch of its kind for SpaceX. Exactly. I mean, this is a big deal. This is a big deal because it represents really the future of human spaceflight for NASA, for SpaceX, and the broader commercial industry. Um, this uh, uh, Falcon 9 and the uh, Dragon capsule that sits on top of it one of the most advanced spacecrafts ever built. Um, and it's also one of the safest. Um, and as you mentioned, there's a lot of firsts. The first uh, US launch since 2011, the first um, new spacecraft since 1981, um, the first privately built uh, uh, crewed spacecraft to take humans to orbit. Um, and it's the first time, obviously, in SpaceX's 18 year history that they're gonna be launching humans. And Importantly, this is going to give us a, an alternative ride to space. Currently, you can only go with the Russians on the Soyuz rocket, and NASA's paying upwards of the last price they paid was $90 million for a seat. SpaceX can offer that same thing for something more like $55 million, so almost half the price. Obviously, it's a whole new economy of space travel and also potentially a future of space tourism. You know, it may not be as expensive for NASA, but it's still incredibly expensive for us regular human beings. I mean, does this open a new era of potentially space tourism or is it going to be for most of us out of reach? Without a doubt. I mean, SpaceX has ushered in this space renaissance that we've seen over the last 10 years where um, they've lowered the price and also published their pricing. So for the first time, it's made space accessible to the rest of us. Um, and they're doing the same thing uh, now with human space flight as well. The thing is, is that with lower costs, you get more access and more participation. And with that, you get more competition. And competition is good because it leads to more innovation. And we've seen that play out over the last 10 years. And so, um, uh, it bodes very well for all of us, all of us who have, have had an interest in space and have wanted to go ourselves, um, for those of us who want to participate and start new companies um, uh, to take advantage of this increased access, and also for those uh, investors who are looking to get involved. Um, there's now room and, and a, a very clear path for all of us to participate uh, in this new entrepreneurial space age. So let's talk about the competition. Obviously, Boeing has also gotten funding for NASA to do shuttle missions. Then, of course, there's Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic and a lot of companies not named SpaceX that are working on this. Talk about the competitive landscape and you know how much of a chance these other companies have of catching up to where SpaceX is today. Yeah, so with this commercial crew program, it's undoubtedly been a success. They were hoping to get to space in 2017, and, and they're obviously a little bit delayed, but not by much, especially in space terms. Um, and when it comes to the commercial crew program, it was Boeing and SpaceX that got the contract. Boeing um, was meant to be the safe bet here. And SpaceX, back when they gave these first contracts 15 years ago, was really an up-and-comer, um, not a lot of track record to speak of. And so they were, you know, hey, if SpaceX can, can do this, um, you know, then it's a great way for us to save some money, but let's also do a contract with Boeing because they're more likely to get us to space. You know, fast forward 15 years, um, SpaceX is, is on the pad. Um, they did a full wet re um, a rehearsal today and they're gonna do, they're gonna try again this weekend. Uh, Boeing has failed to get to the space station in their demo one mission. 
um, and that set them back, uh, I think, a year behind SpaceX. So uh, it just goes to show, you know, it's not just the lower cost, but it's also the innovation, the iteration, um, and the vast number of tests that they do that's allowing uh, SpaceX to really advance uh, what we're doing in the space industry.